بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It is a very sad moment Actually it's the saddest moment humanity had ever witnessed And that is when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away and we spoke about this before and how that the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam suffered before dying and this was so that his level would be elevated at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal and he explained that this life is a test and the more a person is righteous, the more his heart is filled with Iman, the more test Allah Azza wa Jal puts on him. And that is why the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, the most of the people to be tested in life are the Prophets. And then the righteous and then those who are lesser and lesser in Iman. Every person, the Prophet says alayhi salatu wasalam, is tested according his Iman. So if he has strong Iman, Allah would test him strongly. And if he has weak Iman, may Allah have mercy on us, Allah will test him lightly. And that is why when you see the tests that Allah is testing us, you know that we don't have strong Iman. Because we have everything we want. We have three meals a day. Not only that, maybe five meals a day. We have a roof on our heads all of us are in good health relatively speaking everything we want we can find and get and buy Allah says if you count the favors and blessings of Allah you cannot calculate them there's so many yet the greatest and saddest moment in the history of humanity is when our Prophet died when he died the companions did not know what to do. So where shall we bury him? Some said we should bury him this place. Some said, no, don't move him until they learned that the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, all messengers and prophets of Allah, when they die, they're buried where they're dead. They are not moved out. So they knew what to do regarding the burial grounds, but they did not know what to do regarding washing him and they heard some sound from the house and most likely it was an angel telling them that keep his clothes on because some of this companion said let's take all of his clothes off and wash him like we wash all the dead people and they heard a voice telling them don't do this so after washing him they wanted to wrap him in shrouds and as we know all the dead are wrapped in the shrouds and this is something that we should contemplate on because most of you probably did not wash dead people and some of you may have I have washed dead people relatives and friends and it is a sight that frightens you he's dead so what's the big deal we take off his clothes if it's difficult to take off, we cut it by scissors. Only me, two people, three people. And then we cover his aura area from the navel to the knee. We bring the water, we prepare it, we put the cider in it until there's a foam in it. And we prepare the perfumes, we prepare the soap or whatever. We look at his fingernails, if they need clipping, we clip them. His mustache, if it needs trimming, we trim it. And then we put the cotton in his nose, cleaning it, cleaning his teeth. He's dead. Yesterday, he was talking to me. Yesterday, we were having laughs. Now he's dead. So we do this sometimes without thinking. And many times we not think about our loved ones that we're washing. We think about ourselves when people are washing us. 
how it's going to be if I were lying on this wooden bed and people are washing me how much would I pay to go back to life so that I can repent to Allah how much would I give from my fortune from anything that I have so that Allah would give me the chance to pray two rak'ahs on time we have a lot of sins yet we always have shaitan at the back of our heads telling us hey, it's okay it's okay take your time you still have long to live how old are you 60 oh you have 30 years to go i know a neighbor of mine who's 90 years old and if you go to the man who's 90 years old and ask him when are you gonna die grandpa he says ah i've heard of someone in the north of the country who reached 110 so inshallah 110 and us humans never lose hope we keep on thinking that we will live till ever and we never think that there is a possibility that i'm going to die after an hour and so many times i have friends i have loved ones they tell me on the phone so and so just died how is that possible well this is life death does not knock the door and say can I come in therefore we should be prepared now going back to our hadith we have hadith number 158 the hadith was narrated by Aisha may Allah be pleased with her she said that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was shrouded in three cotton garments of white Yemeni stuff from Sahul among which was neither a shirt nor a turban so the scholars said from this hadith that the ideal and the best way of shrouding a dead person is in three pieces of cloth and it is highly recommended that it is white because the prophet والسلام, praised the color white by saying that wear it when you're alive and shroud your dead when they die so the white color is the best of colors and that is why we wear it when we go for ihram and it has to be clean so you don't bring dirty shrouds or dirty clothes to shroud him in not only that the sunnah is to put some incense to it and you know the incense that that you burn and you bring the clothes on top of it so that when you put it on the dead person and you carry it whenever it passes by some people they will find a good smell of it and this is the sunnah and scholars differed whether to use three pieces of cloths for both men and women or three only for men and five for women it's an issue of dispute among scholars and the most authentic opinion in my view is that women have to be shrouded in five why because they are supposed to be protected more than men the shrouds that the prophet والسلام, was wrapped in it did not have a shirt and it did not have a turban which means that a man or a woman must not wear a shirt or a turban when they are being wrapped and shrouded after they are washed this is the sunnah of the prophet alayhi as moving on to hadith 159 this hadith was narrated by um atiyah may allah be pleased with her and um atiyah she used to be a professional in washing the dead female companions and this we have in every community there are people who charge money for it but when they charge money they are not rewarded by Allah do you know that if you wash a dead person and you do not disclose anything that is bad you had seen Allah will forgive you not one not five not ten Allah will forgive you 40 times as in the hadith and whoever gives the shroud for the deceased Allah would give him clothes from the silk 
in paradise. He will grant him, reward him, clothes made of silk in paradise. This is what a person who washes the dead for the sake of Allah would be rewarded. Forty times Allah Azza wa Jal would forgive you. We have a short break. Stay tuned. And inshallah we'll be... Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Ummu Atiyah, may Allah be pleased with her. She has a number of hadiths related to women and women only. For example, she's the one who narrated the hadith about seeing the brownish and yellowish discharge after purity when the menses is over. And she's the one who narrated the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ instructing the women and those who are in their menses and the virgins in their seclusion to go out for Eid prayer. And a number of different hadiths related to these topics which meant that she had more knowledge than other women when it came to issues related to women. Now she says, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to us when we were bathing his daughter. And his daughter was Zainab, the wife of Abu al-As. When she died, the Prophet والسلام, visited them as they were washing his daughter. And he told us, wash her with water and with leaves of the lot tree, three or five times or more than that if you think fit and put comfort or some of the comfort in the last washing then inform me when you have finished so when we had finished we informed him and he gave his own izar which is the garment that is worn from the waist down and he said put it next to her body in another narration or seven so three five or seven he said begin with her right side and with the places of wudu um atiya said and we plaited her hair into three braids in this hadith we learn how to wash a dead person and washing a dead person is not rocket science it is not something that is so difficult because simply washing him or her is sufficient it does the job however can a man or men wash a woman men can men wash a woman no one man is only entitled to wash one woman and that is his wife and can women wash men or a man no only the wife or wives can wash their husband however if hypothetically a man dies in the desert or in a, a village and only women are present can they wash him the answer is no they offer tayammum and they bury him and the opposite is also true if a woman dies among her mahrams brothers father sons can they wash her the answer is no completely only a man can wash his wife and a wife or wives can wash their husband because the Prophet ﷺ stated this in uh, authentic hadith he once entered the house and Aisha said oh my head I have this severe headache and the Prophet said ﷺ, no it is my head as if he is feeling pain because of her pain and this is the great form of showing love when you enter the house and your wife says, Oh, I have this strong pain in my head. Some husbands say, You deserve this because yesterday you gave me a bad time. Others would say, You have a headache, go and take aspirin, go take Panadol. This is not the right way of showing your love. When your wife says, I have a strong headache, you say, Your headache is my headache. Now I'm feeling the pain for you. Show her some affection so the prophet said it's my headache i am the one who has a headache what would happen O aisha if you die the prophet is teasing her now what would happen if you die and i wash you and shroud you 
and pray funeral prayer and I bury you what would happen what's wrong in that so this means that it is possible what did Aisha say Aisha said no that would not happen Prophet of Allah because if you do this you will immediately go to the other wives of yours even after her, her death she's still jealous so she doesn't want this to happen and in the hadith of Aisha may Allah be pleased with her after the death of the Prophet she said if it were for me no one would have washed the Prophet ﷺ except me and his wives. So this clearly indicates that it is permissible for a man to wash his wife and it's permissible for a woman to wash her husband, Asma bint Umais, one of the great companions. She washed her husband. Who was her husband? Asma bint Umais. She was one of the greatest companions of the Prophet. First, she was married to Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. Who is Ja'far? The brother of Ali. Huh? And the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ. After he was martyred in the battle of Mu'tah, she married Abu Bakr as siddiq And she had from him a son. And after Abu Bakr died, she washed him. And this is why I brought her name. Because she is the one who washed Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr said to her, you wash me after I die. Don't let other men come in. You only wash me. And after he died, she married Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now she had a son from Ja'far. And she had a son from Abu Bakr. And while she was with Ali, her latest husband, her two sons fought together. The son of Ja'far says, my father is better than your father. And the son of Abu Bakr says, no, my father is better than your father. And they, you know, brothers, siblings, but from the mother. They started to fight. So Ali was there and he said, you be the judge between them and tell them whose father is best. So she said to the son of Ja'far, your father is the best of the youth because he died young and she said to the son of Abu Bakr your father is the best of the elders because he was in his 60s or so now Ali is the third husband and he said Asma what did you leave for me if he's the best of the youth and he's the best of the elders what's left for me so with all the diplomacy in the world she said to him Ali, three, Ja'far, Abu Bakr, and you. Three, you are considered to be the worst of them. Wallahi, this is an achievement. If these are the three, and you're the third, and you're the worst of them, this is an achievement. Ali smiled, and he appreciated that, and he said to her, By Allah, if you had said anything else, I would have hated you and resented you. Because then you would be lying. If you said, no, no, I did not mean this, not Ja'far is better than you, or Abu Bakr is better than you. If you said anything, I would have hated you and resented you, but you've said the truth. She washed Abu Bakr. Now, we have schools of thought that claim once a woman is widowed, she is a complete stranger to her husband. Once a man dies, these are some of the schools of thought without naming them. They say that the minute the man dies, the wife becomes a stranger. Why? They say because the marriage contract has been nullified. Halas, it's over. He's dead. He's not a husband anymore. And hence, they say, she cannot see him. She cannot give him the last look. She cannot wash him. And of course, by the evidences I've just brought forward to you, we know that this is completely wrong. Even if he dies, she's still his wife. And that is why she has to stay four months and 10 days. Only in one condition that this becomes true, which is very, very, very hypothetical, but it can happen. And that is, if a man is on his dying bed and his wife is in labor, she's pregnant and she's about to deliver. If he dies at one o'clock and she gives birth at 
Can she wash him? The answer is no. Why, Sheikh? She's her wife. It's very simple. After a pregnant woman delivers, the idda is over. Her waiting period is over. Whether it was four months and ten days, for a pregnant woman, it's not four months and ten days. The waiting period for a pregnant woman is when she delivers. So if a man dies in the first of Muharram, and his wife is pregnant in her second month, she has to wait seven months before her idda is over. Meaning that she doesn't leave the house, she doesn't wear perfume, she doesn't put makeup, she doesn't show any sign of happiness. Once she gives birth, then she is entitled to get married and she's out of her idda. This is the longer period. But if he dies and she's in her ninth month of pregnancy and she delivers the following day, she has only one day of idda and she can marry the same day. Why? Because khalas, she is not related anymore. And the issue of idda is very important in Islam. Inshallah, if Allah grants us life, we will be able to discuss these in detail. So, a man can wash his wife, a wife can wash her husband, unless in hypothetical situation she's pregnant and she delivers, then she becomes a stranger to him. Umm Atiyah is telling us that the Prophet came. Did the Prophet come and witness the washing? Definitely not. Because a man cannot attend any woman's washing even if she was his mother or his daughter or his sister but he came and he requested them and he told them what to do in regards of washing so washing a man or a woman is it rocket science no if you have a shower and you just simply do this and wash them three times or five times this is enough this does the job You've washed them or not, it's like, you remember ghusl? We said that there is ghusl according to the sunnah, and there is ghusl which is not according to the sunnah, but it does the job. So if I go in a swimming pool, a big swimming pool, or if I go in a lake or in the sea, and I dip myself with the intention of ghusl, and I make madmada, I turn the water in my mouth, and I uh, uh, inhale water and blow it in my nose, khalas. I have wudu and I have also ghusl, if it's from sexual impurity. Likewise, washing the dead. However, if you go to the books of fiqh, whether the fiqh of Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, or Ahmed bin Hanbal, you will find extensive details. And these details, like 90% of them, are not from the sunnah. Where are they from? They are from the ishtihad, from practice. And some of them may have some logic, some may not have any logic. We, inshallah, will get to know this when we meet next time. Until then, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.